Hello, everybody. We're here today with Anna Marie Dobbins and Jonathan Stoddard, the stars of the upcoming uh, GAC Christmas movie, A Royal Ice and Christmas. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yes, and thank you very much. Tell us a bit, what's been the main element in, in the movie and the, the characters of Abigail and Prince John that fascinates you the most and, and drew you to join a Royal Christmas on Ice? Yeah, I'll start. Um, I, I, I think it's one of those, you know, classic love stories that as a child, you know, you grow up and it's like that fairy tale. It's that nostalgic feeling of like you want to snuggle up on a couch and watch a good movie. And so it's just one of those like heartwarming films. And so I was like, I want to do this. It's something that everybody can watch all ages. Um, and it's just, yeah, it comes out at the best time of year. Christmas movie. Why would you not want to be a part of a Christmas film that's going to always be played and remembered and yeah absolutely yeah exactly there when uh when they sent the script there's some it's just a feel good kind of movie that exactly i mean i just got the visual of sitting on the couch as well um but the other really fun part about this film for me was that there were a lot of people that i knew working on it and i had also heard a lot about anna marie and so people were like oh, she's doing it this is oh this movie's going to be amazing. Oh, and and you're doing it and you guys haven't worked together yet. And so it was, it was really fun. The hype going into it beyond the script, uh, beyond the script. Cause there was, there was so much love and support for making it. Yeah. And as we know quite well so far, uh, GAC movies um, and shows always feature some well-shaped characters and relatable storylines for the audience. Uh, in your opinion, uh, where are you and your characters most similar in real life? And where are you most different? Who wants to start? I don't know. I'll let Jonathan start this one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is a wonderful question. I'll say the first things that come to mind in terms of similarities are... Uh, well, clearly being... What's that? I said, well, clearly you're a prince, so you'll have that in common. Uh, yes. I mean, I mean, there is that, of course. <laughs> uh, but his, his, uh, his gregariousness, his assertiveness, his being proactive, being the opening of the movie that you'll see is his interest with this hockey team and it not working out the way that he wants it to. So then he gets the idea that he's going to go um to the united states and then that's kind of how the story unfolds and going after his dreams that's something that uh, i mean anyone who knows me throughout my life no one's ever said like you should really speed up or everyone's like no slow down you're going after everything you're really like you're chasing after everything and it's that's I don't know. That's a really big similarity. I'm not quite sure of the differences because we are both princes, of course. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they're, I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that. What about you, Anna Marie? Um, so, well, she's a figure skater. And even though I'm not a figure skater, um, I had a double. Thankfully, she was fabulous. She made me look great. Um, but I grew up a dancer. And so that was fun being able to incorporate a little bit of dance. Um, you know, I, I knew how to hold my body. And so we were able to do some cool shots where I was able to kind of dance on the ice in tennis shoes. <laughs> but they did it where they, you know, they used my upper body and um, and they were able to cut it seamlessly with the double. So it was fun to be able to integrate dance in a, in a different way, but kind of integrate dance with that. So that's always fun. Um, similar. Uh, I feel like we are similar in a lot of ways as far as like, um, you know, she, she teaches kids. I still teach kids dance. Um, she teaches kids figure skating. Um, she's really involved in the community. I really like to be involved in my community. So there's a lot of similarities there. I mean, obviously the difference is I don't, I'm not a professional figure skater. Um, yeah. there was many times I busted it on the ice. <laughs> we have it on film. Um, so there's that. Uh, <laughs> John, I'm not going to say anything. The secret goes down with me. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, yeah, it's there. It was there. Um, 
it was funny when when Fred, the director, called and we had a um, like pre-production kind of phone call. He was asking my figure skating um, skills. And so I told him, well, I can get from point A to point B. That's about it. And uh, he was That's like, great. Start, I mean. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, great, we can work with that. Well, you know, I could get from point A to point B, but then adding talking on top of that and having to act while you're skating and think it's hard, man, it's hard. And uh, we had a lot of fun when we were filming those scenes. I think those are some of my favorite days, actually being out there on the ice with Jonathan. We, we had so many laughs. Jonathan ate it a couple times too. I'll throw that out there. We, yeah. <laughs> no shame. No shame. I went down with the ship. Absolutely. Yeah. The camera guys, actually, they were on skates while they were filming. I mean, it was like the shots they got were fabulous. And it was really cool to see because I've never filmed on ice before. Um, so it was, that was just a lot of fun, I would say. Definitely. And we're really looking forward to watching the, the final the final cut of the movie with the the stunts and, and all this stuff on ice. And yeah. to all the fans that are actually looking forward to watching A Royal Christmas on Ice, um, how would you describe the movie if you had like just three words? Gosh, three words. Yes. Family fun romance that's great that's what i got, what I got. <laughs> yeah there you go. i was thinking i was thinking warm like heartwarming fun and love that's a cool answer too <laughs> Uh, <laughs> since we were talking about um ice skating which was um, a challenge for anyone who has never uh, ice skated before. Uh, in terms of acting, what's been the, big, the biggest challenge for you in portraying Abigail and John? Jonathan, do you want to start? Yeah, go ahead, Jonathan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Uh, the biggest challenge, well, I would, I would say there are two oddly equal challenges were uh the the accent and so this was the first movie where the entire character had to be in a different accent and that's something that of course as an actor uh, the first time you do anything there's a lot of self-doubt um wondering if you're doing it correctly um there's also a very interesting thing in film where there's there's truth and aut authenticity and then there is entertainment so I studied by watching The Crown and doing all that, like studying royal communication so much. And, and part of the challenge is I got there and I was able to do it so well that they were like, actually, uh, take back, like, because royal, they, they stumble and they mumble their words so much. And he was like, we can't actually really understand what you're saying. And this is for TV. So if you can like brighten it up and, and you know and make it more understandable so it was like oh okay I have to make these adjustments the accent has to fit into a certain kind of um, medium to make it fun and heartwarming because we're not making the crowd we're not doing you know these really intense movies so that was a really interesting thing and then uh, as Anna Marie was saying the ice skating because whenever you get a role where where the entire especially it's in the title so you would imagine that there's going to be some ice skating and you'd never know what the director wants to get for a shot. So showing up and then having him go like, Hey, can you do a triple axel? And you're like, <laughs> no. And trying to navigate our way through that and then seeing what we could do while saying the lines and acting and then how we have our, our, you know, different kinds of montages and how we play together on the ice. Like there's, it was really, it was really quite wonderful. Those were the biggest challenges and they were also the biggest rewards. Definitely. What about you, Anna Marie? I will say Jonathan's accent was amazing. So, so amazing that I caught myself <laughs> a lot of times in the scene, I would put on a British accent because I was listening, you know what I mean? And so I was into it. And so, so I was like, I had to focus. I have an awful British accent. But one of the uh, co-stars, Robbie, who actually is, he was like, he has an amazing British, and he actually is British. So kudos to Jonathan. He really did his work, and he's it's it's amazing because mine no, is not. 
Um, my my and, southern. Well, thank, <laughs> thank goodness we had Robbie there too, because every time I would slip out of it with Todd, because I felt myself going, I like to your accent, and because I'm like, okay, I have to adapt, I have to adapt, and Robbie was there, so then I was like, you got to anchor me, buddy, because I'm I'm losing it. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, so he did, he did amazing. It's it's really really good. Um, for me, obviously the challenge was the skating because that was hard. But I would say a challenge for me. That's the first time I've actually ever shot in real snow and really cold temperatures. And um, we had this scene this whole day that was shot outside, and it was like in the negatives the whole day, like the, with the wind chill. And we were so cold; we, our lips were like actually freezing, and we were just. <laughs> We had to go inside and like thaw out. It was so, I just, I'm from the South and now I live in LA. So me and cold weather, or it's not a thing. Yeah. I had so many hand warmers and places. It was a lot. So I think just overcoming just the elements, because not only were we in Buffalo, New York, which was freezing, it was February, there was snow. It was like right after a blizzard had happened. And then we were shooting in an ice rink. So the whole movie, I was just like, I'm so <laughs> cold. I just want to thaw out. Um, so for me, it was like the environment. <laughs> was was uh, was different and challenging. So I was trying to get used to that. And then of course the ice skating and trying to act and ice skate. So there was definitely a lot of challenges with this movie, but it made it so much more like the memories of having that and those moments, like me and Jonathan were able to create together. It was like, well, we'll have that forever, which is fun. Absolutely. And talking about the environment on set between you actors and the crew, how would you describe your experience filming this movie? And do you have any any fun anecdotes to share with us? Who yeah, wants I mean, to sure. Um, I'll start. So <laughs> I always say that when you're filming, and Jonathan, I think we've talked about this before, it's it's like summer camp because you get really close to everybody really fast. And you're able to make a family with every single person to have these connections. And this short amount of time. So we shot this movie, um, I think in what, 14 or 16 days, something like that. So it's really quick, but you're on set 12 hours a day, getting to know these people. You're staying in a hotel together. You're going out to dinner after you wrap a long day. So making those connections, it's just so much easier to get to know people quickly on a film set because you kind of have to. Um, so the connections that you're able to make, like me and Jonathan, we've been able to like hang out in LA with him, his girlfriend and like catch a move, you know, just different things. Like you make these connections and these long lasting friends forever. And I've, I've been very fortunate to have those kind of connections from the previous films that I've done. Amazing cast uh, like Jonathan. No, you're amazing. And everything she's saying, absolutely. It's, I like to call them set families. And then especially when we're doing such an aggressive schedule like we were, uh, I like to call it trauma bonding. So we, with everyone going through and, and every single day you're solving problems, you're battling the elements, which I started having flashbacks of all the things she was talking about. There are some things you can't stop, like the wind, or you can't like heating pads and stuff can only do so much. So, but just like she's saying, you bond, you come together, everyone has that common enemy or that common goal. And it's, we want to make a really great movie. And so we all kind of partner up and, and make it happen. And it's probably the absolute best thing that I love about film in general is just how do we solve this problem together? How do we make our day? How do we get the scene? How do we bring this to life? And how do we have fun doing it? Absolutely. And that's really beautiful for us to hear consider because considering the also the amount of hours you have to spend on set all together, it's... I think that really helps to have co-stars you can really have fun with and, and talk to like family. Oh yeah. You, you get to know them really quickly. And Jonathan, we have a lot of inside yeah. jokes now. He, he's one of the most bright people. Like he's one of the people that wakes up bright and early and he is ready to go. Like <laughs> no coffee or anything. He's just like, he loves life. And I love those type of people. Cause I, I usually am peppy, but like first thing in the morning, I'm like, I need my moment. He walks in the door. He's like, good morning. I'm like, I'm going to tell you, but I love you. He's, <laughs> so he's, like, he's like a mythological creature, I think, because yeah. I, I haven't met um, many people who actually can t 
talk without coffee in the morning. So <laughs> not, not real is what I is what the conclusion I'm coming to. He's he's a robot. Um, but no, it's it's I it's a fun community and and getting to make those bonds. It's it's just amazing. Yeah. And now two fun questions that we always ask the people we're interviewing and considering we're talking about Arroyo Christmas on Ice, it's on the Arroyo Christmas on Ice universe. If you could choose any other character on the movie, apart from your characters, so Abigail and, and Prince John, um, a character that you would have loved to play if you could, which one would it be and why? Anna Marie, do you want to start? I, I, okay. Wait, picking, like choosing another character on the in movie. Our... Apart, in, in your case, apart from Prince John, any you other. Choose? You know what? I'm going to say this one because um, I just love him is I will play Daryl Blake, which is William Baldwin's character. <laughs> just yeah. because, one, it's William Baldwin. Hello. Um, he's fabulous. So if I can just pretend to be him for a moment, that'd be fun. And then he gets to play this, like, powerhouse. He just comes in and just, like, owns every single scene he's in. You know, my character usually is the one that's, you know, the girl next door and um, has to be a little, you know, keep to herself, can't be too, too powerful. But um, yeah, he gets to come in and kind of just like steal the show and he's, you know, a supporting role and that's like bomb. So there you go. What about you, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to say me, but you don't have to. <laughs> I mean, if that was an, I guess playing with different kind of gender things would be really fun. Um, no, if anything, uh, I loved, I loved Robbie's character. Yeah. So Marshall was my assistant, um, uh, kind of butler and he follows me and goes on this journey with me and he's just kind of this, this wonderful, uh, character that like I, like I'd mentioned earlier, he's. Prince John is, is very like outgoing. So he's, he's like running in different directions. He's very assertive doing his thing. And then Marshall played by Robbie is running, kind of running after me, trying to find me and, and track me down and get me to do things and like try to get me to go back. And, and he's just, uh, yeah, it, it's such a fun, I, I think our whole dynamic with everything is so fun, but yeah, Robbie's character, I would have a lot of fun with. We can't wait to see more of these characters so we can understand better your your choices. And now another little fun question. Do, um, did you take anything from set to remember this experience filming Christmas on a Royal Christmas on Ice, like piece of costume, a prop? Yeah, I actually I wore this today. This is from wow. the movie. Yeah, I got to keep it. Um, I usually try to keep <laughs> one piece of wardrobe and I was like, it feels appropriate. I'm going to whip it out. And it's also freezing in LA. By that, I mean, it's 60 degrees. And mm -hmm. I was just like, it's a, it's a snuggly sweater kind of day. And there you go. So I do try to keep at least one piece of wardrobe or a, a necklace or something I can. And I have a little spot in my closet for everything I've been in. That's great. What about you, Jonathan? Um, I have a couple pieces of clothes as well. I'm just wearing what I brought in my hotel room. Uh, <laughs> but I, we went to some really cool stores and, um, <laughs> so, so Buffalo, New York, Buffalo chicken wings. Yeah. It's a thing. It is a really big thing. Like there's so much chicken wing pride and, and, so Chris Collins, Anna Marie and I, uh, we went out to the number one Buffalo chicken wing place and it took us an hour and a half to get in and they had swag there. They had shirts and hats and stuff like that. So Anna Marie goes and gets a shirt or uh, gets a like truck hat for me. And so as we had it, um, as I had it on and stuff, I was taking a look at it and I was like, ah, it's a little, a little too boring. Like, in, like it's just white with a with a logo thing 
so anyway, so we sat there and it's probably one of my more joyous memories and uh, splattering barbecue sauce on it. And I still have the hat. So uh, I have a little hat collection and that's, yeah, every time I look at it, because it, it just reminds me of of that night. It was just so fun. It was so fun. It's fun. Yeah. Chris Collins plays my ex-boyfriend. He's wonderful as well. <laughs> that's great. That's cool. And now throwing back instead to the origins um, of your career as an as actors, uh, how did the passion for acting come about in your life? Who wants to start? Sure, I'll start. Um, <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> thank you so much. That's so kind. Um, so I started acting when I was about 13 years old. I was born and bred a dancer. My mom owns a dance studio. And so I've always had a love for the stage of performing, but then kind of started dabbling in um, TV and film when I was 13, just locally and from Alabama and uh, kind of caught the bug, did some commercials, did some print work there. And then, yeah, it just kind of snowballed from there. And then I went to Atlanta, which has a huge film market, worked out of Atlanta for many years while I was growing up. And then when I graduated college, I moved out to LA full time. Um, and so I think it's just a slow like snowball for me where it just like my passion gets more and more and more intense every, every I'll say minute pretty much. Cause I get so excited. I'm such a nerd for this kind of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I think it started at a young age. I was very fortunate. Most of my parents came from an entertainment background. My mom was a dancer on Broadway. My dad was a drummer in a band. And so they really encouraged me to be um, in the arts which I feel like is not the story for a lot of people. I feel like a lot of um, kids who are in the arts don't have the parent support that I thankfully did. Um, so yeah, so I, I think a lot of it came from my parents, which helped me, you know, branch into that world. And then, and yeah, here I am today, living in LA, doing doing what I love. I can't complain. Living the dream, actually. Living the dream, as they say, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Jonathan? Uh so I grew up doing dramatic and musical theater just as I think my parents put me in the programs uh, for during the summer and stuff just to keep me busy. Yeah. So we were like, wow, that, that kid has a lot of energy. Let's uh, put him someplace and getting me around because I'm the youngest of four. I think I was constantly around a lot of people, um, my siblings. And so they, they, by putting me in a theater group or things like that, uh, it was always my family. It always resembled my family. And <clears throat> that to say, it was always easy. It was always there. It was always something that I really loved to do. So then getting older, um, I went to college for physics. Then I dropped out and went to culinary school. And then I started cooking and I started cooking for Cipriani. So then that's when I went to New York. And then I was in Venice, Italy at the time. And I love, 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 love Italy. And um, I was cooking at two different restaurants uh, that Arrigo Cipriani has there. And he came up and he gave me a, a really great kind of proposition. And I had, I had to think. I was in my early 20s and it, this was the first opportunity of like, okay, if I commit, this is going to be the trajectory of my life. And if I do something else, now is the time that I have to start making that decision. Um, and so the, I don't know, there's a classic adage. If, if you had, you know, if you were a multimillionaire, what would you do with your time? Uh, what would you do if you could do anything uh, and just live freely? And the first thought that I couldn't get out of my head was acting. It wasn't being a chef. It was acting. I had already done it for free. So it wasn't like it was that big of a jump. So now I just had to learn how do I make money from it? And one of the other big reasons why I didn't want to be a chef anymore is because most of the time chefs don't cook, they manage. And there was a lot of stuff with that industry that I wasn't really thrilled about. But the stage just always, always, always felt like home. So then I moved to LA and slept on a couch and started acting. And it has been a very long process of trying to navigate my way through the joy and creativity and freedom that comes from a passion to now actually being rewarded uh, for it monetarily, being able to work on great projects with brilliant people like Anna Marie 
and it's yeah it's been a journey absolutely and among all the roles that you have the the chance to to play throughout your career so far uh, is there any particular role you're most fond of or you whether you had much fun or helped you grow as actors that's a hard question I feel like that is a very hard question I've been very fortunate and I feel like Jonathan can say this too is we've been able to take on a lot of different roles. So to pick one is so hard. Um, I think for me, anytime I get to play someone other than myself, I, I get to play myself in a sense, in a lot of it, like a rom-com, you know, they really want the Anna Marie essence, you know? Yeah. Um, but anytime I get to play the antagonist, I feel like that's always fun um, just because, well, I mean, I, I don't, I don't kill people every day. I don't, that's not a thing I usually do. So when I get to do it on screen, it's like, you kind of get to get, you know, get away with it. Um, that kind of thing. And so you get, get into the mindset of why these people are the way they are. And you get to dig deeper into the psychology of different people. I think that's a lot of fun is just trying to, you know, play out those roles of when they aren't you, you know, that's the point of acting as well. But yeah, it's this weird balance. It's hard to say there's one specifically I really cling to. I mean, I'll, I'll course this one hello but um yeah I, I I don't know it's hard for me to pick one Jonathan do you have one I can't say I have one and not to cop out on answering the question but I will say one of the joys and we talked about it earlier in the interview I would say each movie kind of sticks out based off of the problem solving and the amount of hurdles that you have to solve so there are movies that I did earlier in my career where I was still kind of learning to be on set mm -hmm. and um, like shooting this movie in Iceland and totally going blank and getting uh, pneumonia. And I had this huge ending scene and having the crew and the team rally to help me make that scene great. And there's nothing that can replace that image. And then there's even, which ironically is in the cold, but even with the one that we did, um, there were moments, and it's funny because the uh, the Buffalo news team got video of Anna and, Anna and I like trying to warm each other because it was, I don't know, what was it, like 17 degrees or I don't know. It was oh, ridiculous. And the wind is blowing. They're even interviewing a couple ladies and the wind is like their hair is in their face. And and then meanwhile, it's like, okay, uh, okay, ready and action. <laughs> and you know these every movie requires you to overcome certain challenges and then you walk away from that movie being a stronger performer um having more like very very humble so it's but it's the movies humble you in different kinds of ways and that could be from the cast it could be from the environment so it's hard to pick one movie that really sticks out because making movies is hard there there's nothing nothing simple about it and so every challenge is unique and you think like oh i've seen it all i make movies no big deal and then you get out there and you're faced with a challenge that you could never imagine um even just to say i'm shooting a western and i had a horse fall on me uh last week and it was um, really scary. It was really scary. And it's, but then you have to, as they say, get back up on the horse. And so I had to get back on the horse. It was a stallion. Um, it was flirting with a mare uh, during filming. And, um, but it's a whole other thing, you know, it's, but I'm never going to forget that moment. I'll, I'm never going to forget the moments that Anna and I shared while making the movie. So it's hard to, it's hard to pick yeah. one. That's okay. And our final question, um, if you had to give an advice to young people or people in general that are trying to pursue an acting career or a career in entertainment in general, what kind of advice would you give them? Ooh. That, that bears a lot of weight. Um, it's hard to say there's one thing, but I think the main thing is to be persistent. If it's something you love, you just really have to be persistent. 
stay in class, stay training, stay sharp on your skills. I'm still constantly training. Even I've worked, you know, for over 15 years in this industry and I'm still learning and training and um, working on my craft. So I think staying fresh with your skills, staying persistent, not taking no for an answer, meaning move on. It's it, you, You're not always going to get a yes. And if you get a no, that's okay. And you can learn and you can grow from it and you can, you know, just stay with it. Um, Cause it just, sometimes it just takes time. Um, some people can be lucky in, in their first audition and, and land a major role, but it doesn't usually happen that way. So I think, um, yeah, the biggest thing is just be persistent. Great. Jonathan. Nice. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Um, for me, I think one of the biggest things is a question to, I would encourage everyone to ask yourself a question. Will my current behavior make my dreams inevitable? And I think that that offers a lot of really interesting insight uh, that everyone has to reflect on because it's it's really easy to say, like you want to, everyone says, I want to go be an actor. I want to go do this. And then uh, they're either taking a class or they feel like a class, like, yay, I'm taking a class. That's going to make it happen. And unfortunately it's not. It takes, you know, you have to take a class. You have to study here. You have to go to this. You have to find the, the group chats. You have to um, do everything you can. Try to get to the festivals, get together with your friends. So is my current behavior making my dreams inevitable? And if the answer is no, then you need to start changing your behavior to make sure that your dreams are going to happen no matter what. And it takes that persistence and it takes that passion and it takes that dedication. And pretty soon it it takes its own life and it's uh, like a life of its own. And it's pretty amazing. Both were really beautiful answers. And I think many, many people will really be inspired by them. Thank you so much, guys. That's all for us. And let's remind people that uh, A Royal Christmas and Ice airs Saturday, November 5th. Um, on Great Christmas Family, Great American Christmas. <laughs> and nothing, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Awesome, thank you for thank having me. Thank you very much. Yes, grazie mille. Grazie a voi. <laughs>